Thank you for buying a laser computer system. This system is designed to make your computing as productive and easy as possible. Following this hookup tape will allow you to be set up and working in under 20 minutes. This videotape is divided into three parts, setting up your computer, using the software, and technical advice and support. I will be following the quick start guide that comes with your computer. You may pause this tape at any time. First thing to do is to unpack everything in the box. Save the carton and all the packing material in case you want to transport your computer later. Inside the carton you will find the computer, the keyboard, the quick start guide, the hardware reference manual, the MS-DOS manual, additional software manuals, and a packet of disks. Most of our computer systems also include a mouse and a color monitor. Also included are the warranty and registration cards. Fill these out as soon as possible and be sure to mail them in. The information on these cards allows us to notify you of any software upgrades. Next, you want to decide where to put your computer system. It should be set on a table or desk with enough room to fit the computer with the keyboard in front of it. It should be placed away from major appliances like a refrigerator or air conditioner. Some computers also include a modem or a fax card, which allows you to communicate with fax machines or other computers over a telephone line. So they should be set close to a telephone jack. Some of our computers have different case designs. Determine which computer you have. The connectors on the back will be identical except for the video connector. Place the computer on the desk with the back facing you. Locate the socket for the power supply on the left side. Plug in the three-pronged power cable that came with the computer into the power socket. Do not plug the other end into the wall socket just yet. Look at the connectors on the back of the computer. On the bottom right-hand side is a round connector for your keyboard. Look at the cable which is connected to your keyboard. The round plug on the end has a notch or a groove in one part. Make sure that notch is facing up and plug in your keyboard now. If it does not go in easily, do not force it. Pull it out and try again. Most of our computer systems also include a mouse. Look at the connector on the end of the mouse cable. It is shaped like the letter D with 25 pinholes in it. Locate the connector on the bottom of the computer labeled COM2 or mouse. It also is shaped like the letter D with 25 pins. Plug the mouse connector in here. Some of our computer systems also include a modem or fax card. On the right-hand side of the computer are four metal slats. If your computer includes a modem, one of these slats will have two telephone jacks on it. Take the telephone wire that comes with the computer. Plug one end into the telephone jack in your wall. Plug the other end into the telephone jack marked line. If there are no markings on this slat, then plug it into either telephone jack. If you also want to connect your telephone, plug the wire on the back of your telephone into the second telephone jack. Your telephone will work even when the computer is turned off. The last connection is for the monitor. Look at the remaining metal slats. One of the metal slats will have one or two D-shaped connectors on it depending on which computer you have. This connector has 15 pinholes in it. Take the cable that is attached to the back of the monitor. Plug it into the connector with 15 pinholes. Tighten the thumb screws to make sure the cable does not come off later. Now plug in the monitor's power cord into the power socket on the back of the monitor. Turn the computer so the front is facing you. Take the monitor and put it gently on top of the case. On some computers, there are cooling vents on the top of the case. Make sure that you do not cover these cooling vents with the bottom of the monitor. 
The final hookup is the power cords. You can plug these power cords into a three-prong wall socket, but we highly recommend that you use a surge suppressor. A surge suppressor regulates the voltage coming into your computer system and keeps it from going above 120 volts. This protects your computer from power surges of electricity. On some computer systems, the software has already been installed on the hard disk drive. Look at the packet of disks that came with your computer. If you see a yellow card stating that the software is already installed, you can proceed to the next part using your software. Make sure that you store these disks in a safe dry place. If you ever have to reinstall this software, you will need these disks. If the software has not been installed on your hard disk drive, then you will have to do one more step, which will only take about five minutes. Look at the floppy disk drives. If there is a cardboard protector in one of the drives, remove it now. Take the disk labeled Disk 1 and place it in the top disk drive with the label facing up. Turn on your monitor and then your computer. It will take several seconds for a picture to appear. The computer will first count the RAM memory. Next, the disk drive will load a special program into the computer. This program does two things. First, it formats the hard disk drive. That means that it will prepare your hard disk drive to store information. This part will take about four minutes to complete. Second, it will automatically copy all the software that comes with your computer to the hard disk drive. Follow the instructions on the screen and change disks when it prompts you to do so. This should be the only time that you will have to use these disks. The entire process will take about five minutes to complete. Pause this tape now until the computer is finished with this install procedure. Turn on your computer. In several seconds, the ensemble main screen will appear. This is called the welcome screen. There are three pictures called icons in the middle of the screen. These are the three main programs of Ensemble. In the middle of the screen is a pointer that is shaped like an arrow. You can move this pointer around the screen by moving the mouse back and forth. Move the mouse so that the pointer is touching the first icon named Appliances. Press the left mouse button once. In several seconds, a new screen appears. There are different icons on this screen with their titles below. There is a calculator, an address book, a planner, and a notepad. These programs are items that you would find on an office desk. The appliance programs are very easy to use, even if you have never touched a computer before. The bar on the top of the screen says choose an appliance. To load any one of these programs, just point to it with the mouse pointer and click the left mouse button. For example, to load the notepad word processor, just point to it and click. On the right side is the word help. Clicking this would display a help screen. On the left side of this bar is the word exit. Click this now to return to the previous screen. You are now back to the ensemble welcome screen. So to load any program, just point to it with the mouse pointer and click the left mouse button. This is called point and click, and it is much easier to use than typing complicated commands. Move the mouse so that the pointer is touching the second icon named Professional, and press the left mouse button once. The Professional programs are for computer users with more experience. They include the same four basic appliance programs, but these are now more sophisticated and powerful. In addition, there are several new programs, the most important of which are GeoWrite and GeoDraw. GeoWrite is a full-featured word processor. It allows you to easily create letters and documents. GeoDraw is a draw program with powerful drawing tools. Pictures that have been created in GeoDraw can be copied into a GeoWrite document. This gives you the ability to create professional copies of your work. Time does not permit me to discuss all of these features in detail, but I would like to point out some important ones. On the top of the screen are the words File, Tree, View, Options, disk, and window. These are called pull-down menus. 
Use your mouse to point to any one of these words and click the left mouse button. This pulls down a menu from which you can choose options. Pull down menus are very important because all the ensemble programs use them. To make the menu disappear, move the mouse pointer to any empty area on the screen and click the mouse button again. On the bottom of the screen are pictures of a file folder and of the world. The file folder represents the files on your hard disk drive. The world represents the programs. Using the file folder is an easy way to copy, rename, or delete files. For more information on how to use all of these features, refer to the Ensemble Quick Start Guide. In the middle of the screen are the program icons with their titles below each. To run any one of these programs, just point to it with the mouse pointer and click the left mouse button twice in rapid succession. Find the one marked Preferences. Point to it with the mouse pointer and click the left mouse button twice in rapid succession. You should see the shape of the pointer change to an hourglass. If you did not, point to the Preferences icon and double click it again. In several seconds, the Preferences screen will appear. Preferences allows you to select a printer, change the speed of your mouse, or to set the date and time. To exit the Preferences program, point to the word File and click the left mouse button once. The last option on this menu is Exit. Point to Exit and click the mouse button again. Now you should be back in the Professional Program screen. To return to the Ensemble Welcome screen, again point to the word File and click the left mouse button and choose the Exit option. The last icon on the Ensemble main screen is the DOS Programs. DOS Programs allows you to use standard DOS programs from within Ensemble. It also lets you work directly with MS-DOS. Try experimenting with all these programs. We recommend that you start with the Appliance Programs until you're more comfortable using them. Then move on to the Professional Programs. To learn more about other programs, use the tutorial included in the Ensemble Manual. All laser computers are covered by a one-year warranty. This is done through a national service organization and it applies to the 48 contiguous states as well as the island of Oahu in Hawaii. If you experience a problem with your computer, please do not return it to the store where you bought it from. It may be a minor problem that can be easily solved. Instead, consult the troubleshooting checklist in the hardware reference manual. If you still cannot solve the problem, Call Laser Technical Support at the telephone numbers listed in your manuals. Before you call, please write down the model number and the serial number which are located on the box. Also write down the problem being as specific as possible. If we cannot solve your problem over the phone, we will call our national service organization and they will contact you to set up an appointment. We at Laser have worked hard to make your computer system as complete and easy to use as possible. A great deal of thought and attention has gone into every part of this system. We know you will enjoy using your new computer. And again, thank you for buying a Laser computer.